All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Christy James. I'm with um, the Pediatrics uh, Division of Developmental Medicine here at IU School of Medicine. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our phenotyping database that we have in our division. Um, if you were at Lindsay's talk in here right after lunch, it's going to sound very similar. Um, basically, I will give you a little background about um, what we do in our division so that this makes sense. So when we see children for evaluation of developmental disorders, what we have to do is basically three parts. Um, we have to take a very thorough developmental history. There are a battery of psychological measures that um, tests that may be performed. And then there's clinical observation piece. And then all of those will be combined by the clinician to come up with diagnoses and treatment recommendations for that patient. And the end result is a very long um, PDF document that gets uploaded into Cerner with some of the score report, final score reports, and then um, those diagnoses and recommendations. Um, of the um, psychological measures, there's a lot of data within those. So, I'm going to show you one briefly. They look a lot like this. <laughs> they come to us as a PDF, and this particular assessment is 29 pages long that looks like this. So there's a lot of item level data within it um, that um, because it comes as a PDF and, and it's essentially used by the clinicians, um, but not actually uploaded into Cerner or anything, all this data is lost to us for research or QI purposes. So our plan was let's add a data repository alongside of Cerner where we can capture some of this data that is lost um, and use it for research along with the EMR data. And then it was really important to us that it fit into our clinical flow within the division um, we didn't want to disrupt that or add more burden to our clinicians and our scheduling staff. Um, so we tried to make some benefits to them in that um, that developmental history piece you see at the top there used to just be like a paper form that was mailed out to families. Um, and then they, families would come with like school reports or IEPs and um, those were all things that had to be managed. So those are all now um, in Red Cup and electronic. So they, as soon as a patient is scheduled, like those will go out, families will fill out the questionnaire. It will come in electronically, be uploaded into Cerner. Um, so it's available for the clinicians um, in an expected place. Um, it's still PDF form, but it, um, the intake form is discrete data now. So we get a lot of rich history information. A little more detail. So um, we have basically um, a scheduling form, <laughs> which has our, it drives most of the things that happen within our database. Um, the first thing that will happen is that once the patient is scheduled for an appointment, um, the, the database will send out um, a consent and the e-consent um, comes in multiple languages for us. So we're using the multi-language capabilities. And we, um, after they've completed the consent, it automatically um, starts them on the developmental history form, which is um, a very long form, <laughs> but uh, captures a lot of data. And that goes in straight into REDCap. Um, and then the, we have, that's all like before the visit ever happens so that the data ha that is there for the clinician to review before their appointment. And then after the visit, then there's various surveys that may or may not go out. Um, typically there's one that goes to the provider that saw the child and sometimes uh, the, the caregiver for the child. Um, the provider will upload files with the um, data for us into REDCap in, in a file upload. And then that is later entered as discrete data into 
into REGHAP. Um, a quick, I wanted to make sure we talked a little more about consent just because we have two pieces to our consent that are important. One is the, can we use your data for research? All the data, just to clarify, will go into REDCap because it's clinical use as usual, as far as IU Health is concerned. So it will go in there so our clinicians can use it, but we can't use it for research unless they gave us permission. So that's like a discrete field in our, in our consent um, that we have to filter on later. And then we also added can we contact you for future research? So now we've built a lovely research registry for this pretty unique population that we have already found people value having access to. So to describe our data set, um, basically that we, we used a longitudinal study, but the events within it, we have our intake event where that scheduling form that I talked about is and the consent and the intake form all live. But then each of the events moving forward is actually a particular appointment type. And we have multiple types within our division because we have multiple types of providers. We're an interdisciplinary group. Um, so we have MDs, psychologists, speech therapists, we have genetic counselors. So each appointment type and we have many, many types <laughs> um, will have what, it, what is the basic information we wanna get out of it out on top of what we're already getting in Cerner and clinically. So we might have different provider or caregiver surveys. We have different psychology measures available in each that are relevant. So as I mentioned, the scheduling form is um, that, that key piece for our, our process flow. It's gonna collect you know, name and date of birth. Um, MRN is something we definitely collect because when we do our analyses later, we need that to be able to merge with other data. Um, and then another piece we added um, was the way we have it is, is patients could potentially be in more than one record, um, depending on how many times they come into our clinic. So um, we have a, is this the first contact for that family? So those initial developmental history forms only go out once. We can also say, don't send those because we know the family would have not be able to fill them out. Um, This is more detailed than you need, but what basically all of our surveys are automated. The ones that we use for surveys, um, the ones above the blue line there are, are pre-visit and then the ones below are after post-visit. They're all scheduled based on date of appointment and a certain amount of time before or after. Um, we also added um, not just the standard, like if they didn't complete it, um, uh, repeat surveys that you can do, but we added um, an alert that says, okay, not only have they been reminded twice, but now it's um, three days before their appointment and they still haven't done it, let's send them another alert. So um, that has been helpful in getting our response numbers up. And then what credit cap features are we using? Um, all the features. Um, <laughs> we are, I, I won't go into a lot of detail about them, but I'm happy to talk to anyone about them. Um, the, each um, of the measures that um, I mentioned before, each of the psychological measures that the tests that we're doing with the children, they have, uh, many <laughs> fields. Um, so we had to work with um, our providers and say, you know, which of these are really the ones that you're concerned about for research or clinical purposes? And those are the ones we're pulling out. And they can be calculated fields within that. So some of them are indices and they'll measure certain um, 
behavioral characteristics perhaps, and then of those, the score will be calculated. Um, so that's all done automatically. We do for the, we do calculated text for things like, um, if you saw earlier, you have to validate a email field for automated surveys to go out. So um, the scheduler will just have to say, click, this is the provider I want, and I don't need to know their email address because it will calc text that email address for them. Um, what else? The multi-language uh, management, our consent, we have in three languages right now, English, uh, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Those are our three main clinic populations. Um, the files that are uploaded, the ones that have to be manually entered by our data interns, <laughs> those actually inline display in the form for the, them. So all they have to do is, is um, scroll through it and enter the data. We have user roles um, to manage who can have access to what, missing data codes. And then we use reports for um, routine progress reach checks on the, the work as we're going along, um, data management and quality checks to go back and say, this doesn't look right, or this is way out of uh, the standard range. And then we do regular data exports for analyses. So what have we done with the repository so far? So it has only been in place for one year and I have only been with it for about six months. So I inherited it, um, but we have done a QI study on psychology reports like clinical usefulness, how much do parents like them there? Are they too long? Is there too much info? Is there not enough info? Um, we did a QI study on improving triaging within our clinic for a certain type of appointments. It was an autism evaluation that we do via telehealth. And um, we were finding too many people, too many children were referred and scheduled in this appointment type that really weren't appropriate for that particular test. So we had to, um, we, we did a quick study with the data we had and said, you know, of the, of the characteristics of the patients you're scheduling, these are more appropriate. Um, we did a study on the BASC-3, which is a particular behavioral measure that our psychologists use. And um, it was a student project that was a reaction to a publication that came out by the people who created that measure, who said, not only is it wonderful, but it solves all the world's problems. And so we tried to say, well, this is what we see in our clinic. And, and we're just kind of adding to that body of knowledge of, maybe not all the things. Um, we are currently in the process um, of adding genetics to our data set now. Um, and the events and forms, they have several data sources they're dealing with now. And I'm sure if you've worked on other projects, you know how this goes where there's this person has an Excel sheet and this person has a red cap repository and um, this person has a stack of papers in a special folder. So <laughs> we are working on getting all that into the same place so that when we run our queries, we have all that data available to us. And then it's been really helpful for our grant proposals um, to be able to say, this is what our population looks like. This is what we would like to do. We have gotten we got two internal grants this year based on what we wanted to do with the data sets. And then um, we are currently in a, on Monday, submitting an RFP for a really big uh, multi-site grant that we're very excited about that we'll be able to um, fund this project better and get more people and really uh, bring it up to higher levels. So what are we going to do with it in the future? We are automate, 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 right? That's my mantra. Like we should not have, we want as very little data entry as possible. We want it to come in. Um, so obviously more EMR scheduling um, integration. We have 
some now where we pull upcoming appointments for the next week, they're uploaded um, into our, our registry, but it's not, let's say seamless. <laughs> so it needs a little more attention than we'd like. Um, we do the psychology tests that we get. Some of them only print out in a PDF form that we can read <laughs> visually, but um, some of them are available digitally so we can get all that item level data. So that um, is an easy like low hanging fruit where we could say, let's just take those fields, match them to our red cap fields and upload them in. Um, and then some more better refined data management. There's always more we can do in that realm. Um, we want to expand the use of our multi-language features. We're only using it for consent right now. We'd love to get some more of the forms set up, uh, the surveys set up with that. Um, and then we are slowly adding more appointment types. So we started initially with just psychology testing because that was our bigger need and it was a nice narrow scope to, <laughs> to start de dealing with. Um, but now we're adding more and more types within our clinics um, to add the data. And then we're also adding um, iPads within the clinic so that if people don't you know, complete their forms ahead of time, they can do it while they're here or some of the parental um, questionnaires like about behavior of their children, they could do while they're in the clinic. So those are our directions. And then just quickly, um, Dr. Reisinger is the psychologist who initially started this project and put a lot of effort into it. Um, she left us, but <laughs> um, we are continuing with it. Um, Angela Paxton is our project coordinator and helped with some of the initial builds. Um, our interns are all doing wonderful data entry work. Patrick Forgy is a, a trainee of ours who did some data entry and some research and is now moving into learning the world of data. Yay and he's gonna help with support. And then um, many thanks to Kat Bauer Martinez for the oodles of questions that we brought to her. <laughs> Any questions from anyone? I know I kind of rushed through a lot of that. Okay, we're all done for the day and we wanna go home. Go ahead. Um, so the question is, how do our docs get um, other documents into our REDCap data set? Um, so they get a survey after the appointment, and that's where they're putting the bulk of like their testing reports and stuff, uploading them there. If they get, if we get other documentation like after the visit, like sometimes a week later, the parent will send in the school report or something like that. Um, we have a process that our front office staff will. Um, you know, uploaded into Red Cup as well as or Cerner or wherever it belongs. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone.